We formally start in January. Yeah. And we have a large group of uh, colleagues and workers working together. So I'm very blessed by all these uh, colleagues. Before coming to the conference, I talked with some of them. Yes. And a lot of them were suggesting this is quite a luxury almost, <laughs> given yeah. the international environment. Right, right. And also given the fact that there has been tremendous amount of discussion about science mm -hmm. during the past three years in the middle of COVID. Right. How do you see where we are in terms of scientific cooperation? Actually, very surprised that we got such a strong support from all over the world. We invite uh, uh, you know, over 250 uh, scientists and more than 200 actually decide to come. And I think that is a tremendous achievement. Uh, I think there are many international congress or conferences in many other uh, places, including China. I think they have much less successful rate of getting people to come. And many people actually come far away. How do you as a scientist look at the geopolitical environment that we are in today? Well, scientists in general are very happy to cooperate with each other as long as we are working for science. Yes. And the advancement of science and educating younger people, independent politics, independent of ge geography. And I'm very pleased by such a uh, view. And I, I think all of the science who is leading the world would like to uh, work together, independent of politics. Mm -hmm. And I hope our conference can achieve that, yeah. keep providing a platform for all these Greek scientists to come together and to communicate without thinking about uh, war, without thinking about borders, without thinking about economic achievements. Mm -hmm. We all focus on science. What is the nature of brainstorm that you hope scientists could have and should have today? Well, first of all, uh, the conference is being held in Beijing. It's rather unique because uh, China is in an important period for science development. Uh, for the last 40 years, we see the explosive uh, advancement in technology in China. And there are many uh, brilliant uh, young scientists Chinese has sent to America, to send to Europe, and many of them stay there and contributing to their technology advancement. And some of them are willing to come back nowadays. And uh, China's economic has advanced to a stage that many people feel that they would enjoy the same kind of uh, life within China relative to America or Europe. So this is another important transition point. Mm -hmm. And then education-wise, we see that many high schools in China has reached to a plateau which is comparable with the best high school in the world, including America. So these young uh, high school students will contribute to the scientific development in the near future. Mm -hmm. And when I say near future, we are talking a matter of three or four years. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a great uh, transition point for China. And it's rather unique among the whole world because uh, in many countries, they suffer from uh, um, budget cut and all that kind of things. And China, uh, Chinese leaders are very wise to, f to invest into basic science and technology and all that. Mm -hmm. And also the students are being encouraged uh, to go into science. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a very unique opportunity uh, for the whole world to, to interact, to advance science in China. And whatever product it will come out, I think will spread all over the world. And I think the Chinese leader has made that clear mm -hmm. that China is not going to suppress the uh, uh, you know, the, the development of science uh, and will be willing to offer to the whole world. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very important for scientific community. What are some of the frontier areas of science that you are looking at very closely these days, that you consider it as the biggest potential for the near future? 
Well, mathematics is certainly one of the <laughs> most major ones, besides, oh, besides <laughs> I'm a mathematician, because you look at all these computer science development, AI and all this, they are largely based on basic mathematics. Mm -hmm. And any advance in uh, mathematics will be very important for, us, for the development in computer science. But actually, uh, fundamental physics contributes tremendously to mathematics, to technology together. Mm. Professor, to your last question, yes. you yourself yeah. is a mathematician. Right. And many are looking at your role model right. Thank you. Um, around the world, yeah. especially here in China, many young people. Right. What advice would you give to these young people who aspired about making some contribution to science? Well, we need to build a curiosity of nature. Anything that are mysterious in nature uh, should be explored by young students and by mature students or old men like me. Uh, I think this is very enjoyable to find out something that we do not know. And we use mathematics to find out the laws, the rules behind them. I think this is fascinating. And like AI, there's something that we do, still do not know. So I hope all the students should know that, should be brought in mind. We want to find the mystery of nature <laughs> through mathematics, through physics, through computer science. Uh, there, yes. are, there are tools, there are also basic principles. All of them are important. They are our companions. They are all together, yeah, yes. come together.